Hello everyone, welcome to Trilby's Notes. This is the third part of the Chozo Mythos, out of a four-part series. Just like the previous games, it's completely free, so I'll have a link in the description to where you can check it out for yourself. Let's get into it, new game. I'm going to leave the tutorial on. Uh, I have played through the first five minutes, which I'm pretty sure the tutorial gave me all I needed to know at that point, but just in case something pops up later that it wants to teach me and I need to know, I'll leave it on. And let's turn the developer commentary off. The following documents are taken from the handwritten notes of Trilby, an SDP field operative whose real name remains classified. Game over. That was what I thought as I stood and watched Defoe Manor collapse into flaming ash. The ordeal was over. Those five days cost us all so much. Philip and AJ paid with their lives. They were the fortunate ones. Jim Fowler was expelled from school for truancy, a bright future in tatters. Simone Taylor took to the bottle. Her broadcasts became slurred, her eyes hollow and unwelcoming. She soon vanished from television screens. As for me, I tried to return to life as a cat burglar, but I had been forever tainted by my time spent in that wretched house. The memories of my possession came back in my nightmares. Every night I was there again, in the mansion, staring out through unfamiliar eyes as Philip died at my hands. I became convinced that John Defoe was not at rest, that some day he would return for me. I became so terrified of invisible enemies that I forgot about the tangible ones. Two slow, miserable years after Defoe Manor, a barrage of truncheon blows taught me a harsh lesson in reality, and I woke up in the kind of filthy cell I assumed would be my new home. But then he came, the man from the government, with his nervous smile, offering an alternative. The STP, the Special Talent Project. It hadn't been that much earlier that I would have sooner died than entered an obligation with anyone, least of all the government. Had Defoe Manor changed me so much? Whatever my reasons, I left my past behind and resolved to give my new superiors nothing to complain about. I spent a year and a half completing assignments, developing contacts, building a reputation. And then, the past caught up. In the summer of 1997, I became, con I became concerned about Simone Taylor's mental well-being. The papers were reporting her continual breakdown, and she had become a virtual recluse. I had no idea if my appearance would assist or hinder. I had, after all, deliberately allowed her to think me dead. Presumably she knew differently now, after the media coverage of my arrest, but I would expect her to be bitter about my subterfuge. On balance, I decided that a meeting with an old friend would most likely be beneficial. I came to her apartment building on a warm, stormy night, and braced myself for the encounter. Alright, that's the uh, tutorial stuff there. Okay. First thing that I need to mention, this game is... Uh, the way you control this game is completely and utterly different from the previous two games. So the previous two games were the basic point-and-click interface. You click on the ground to move somewhere, you click on an object to do something with it, that sort of a thing. This is completely different. It is not a point-and-click game anymore. You move around with the cursor keys, and you actually interact with stuff by typing. It actually has an interpreter. So, for example, it's, it's going to take a lot of time for me to get used to this. Uh, let me try examine on the window. I don't know if that'll work. Okay, this examine's like the same thing as look around. Simone's apartment building was gripped by a thick smell of musty, unwashed carpets. It perplexed me that a celebrity would choose to live in such a... Uh, low-rent accommodation. Also, I have to say, the font is... a little bit hard for me to read, so I might misread some stuff or stumble over some things. Particularly the L's don't even look like L's. They look kind of like eyes. I believe I can look out window. Yeah, a summer storm was raging outside. Light rain pattered against the glass, 
the gentle noise punctuated by rumbles of coarse thunder. So, yeah, you type to interact with stuff and use the cursor keys to move. You do have an inventory, but... And you can access that with tab, but, you know, you have to use that through text, like use lockpicks on door, for example. So, it's very different. I'm completely, completely unfamiliar with controlling a game in this way. By using text and talking through an interpreter, basically. So, I'm probably going to get stuck. Just warning in advance. I'm really intrigued with how it's going to work out, though. Because, again, I've never played a game like this. Alright. I knocked sharply upon Simone's door. Oh yeah, F3 recalls the last command, which I'm going to have to do because she is not going to answer. Receiving no reply, I knocked again, louder. Still no response. The doorman had assured me Simone was in. I decided it was time to enter by my own methods. Alright, if, if there's one thing that Trilby's good at, it's using lockpicks. I've got some lockpicks, so let's use lockpicks... Ondor. I reasoned that Simone would uh, could have been in trouble, and even if she wasn't, then at worst I was only playing at my reputation. I spent a few minutes feverishly picking the lock, then let myself in. Look around. Simone's bedroom light refused to turn on. I stood in pitch darkness, with the intermediate flashes of lightning preventing my eyes from adjusting. All right, now I'm in front of the window. The storm continued outside. I wondered why only part of the light was entering the room. Now this is where I got stuck for a, a minute, not trying to figure out what to do. I think what I did is I, I think I, no, that's not how you spell that. I think I tried to touch the window. Yeah, I discovered a blind hanging down over the window. And then I did like move blind or something like that. I pulled open the blind. There we go. And there she is. Touch body. The body on the floor was un undoubtedly Simone. I felt for a pulse, and my hands came away stained with uh, long, cooled blood. My fingers traced the outline of a large wound in her torso, slashed by a big weapon, wielded by a big assailant. I called for an ambulance, as futile as it would be, and left before they arrived. And due to me being a clear murder suspect, I was relieved from duty for the week it took for the Ministry of Occultism to inspect the flat and confirm supernatural activity. My superior simultaneously apologized and assigned me to investigate if there was a connection to the Defoe Manor incident. Merely reading those three words, capitalized on the front of a loose leaf file, brought the nightmares back with more intensity than ever. Sure enough, a field agent reported that looters had discovered and sold several artifacts from the mansion, including the wooden idol that housed John Defoe's soul. To my surprise, no murders had been reported or committed by anyone who had come into contact with the accursed trinket. I did not find this reassuring. I quickly advised James Fowler to go into hiding. He was stunned, but agreed. The boy had sense, and still respected my judgment. This done, I began following the idol's trail. From the pawn shop it had entered, the possession of one professor... A bad... Chahal, an authoritative, uh, authoritative historian. He had scheduled some kind of antique fair in the... Uh, Kalan Brownwin? What? Brown? Brown? Uh, whatever. Hotel. On a small island off the coast of Anglesey, popular with tourists. Assuming the role of a scholar of antiquities, I booked a room. On the 28th of July, 1997, I got a ferry from... I don't know what the hell that is at Inglesi and arrived at around 3 p.m. in Clan the something Island's coastal village. Right. It seemed a peaceful hamlet, and in defiance of stereotype, the locals were welcoming, and told me no local legends to dissuade me from exploring the island. Oh, that's nice. Okay, what actually is that? Clan Brown... Brownwin? Bra Bronwyn. Bronwyn. 
Okay, the Clan Bronwyn Hotel was in the island center, surrounded by forest. I made my way there on foot. You're Trilby, right? As soon as I arrived, I was greeted by a balding man in a gray anorak. I wondered if I was expected to know who he was. That depends. My name is Lenkman. I'm with the Ministry of Occultism. Oh? I thought the Ministry were clear on the fact that I was handling this on my own. Maybe there are still people who don't trust you, Mr. Trilby. What? I haven't stolen anything since I joined the STP. Your colorful past is not what concerns my superiors. It hasn't gone unnoticed that your history with the Defoe Wraith influences you psychologically. I'm sure you resist it, but it could still cause you to act irrationally, disobey orders. Everyone just feels a little safer with someone else on the ground. I see. You can rest assured that I will endeavor to maintain absolute professionalism in this assignment. Nevertheless, I have my orders. I would suggest we keep out of each other's way, then, and pursue separate investigations. I'm sure I don't want to get mixed up in a reunion. I watched him disappear around the corner of the building. I very much doubted that Linkman and I would become friends. The Clan Bronwyn Hotel lobby was a warm welcome. The building was certainly well maintained, and yet there was something about it that nagged at the back of my mind, quickening my pulse. I dismissed the sensation, an act which, in retrospect, I would come to regret. Good evening, Terence Railby. I have a reservation. Ah, yes, you're here for the antique fair. We've put you in room 3C on the third floor. If you'd like to sign in the check-in book. Hello, Bethan. Just letting you know I'll be having dinner in my room today. That's absolutely fine, Professor. This, I decided, was what they called a golden opportunity. Professor Chahal? Yes? I'm afraid you have me at a disadvantage. Railby. Terence Ra Railby. We met at Sotheby's a few months ago. Uh, oh, you don't remember me. Uh, no, no, of course I do. Terry Railby, how have you been? The astute reader has already guessed that I, th that both Terence Railby and the previous meeting were utter fiction. I had spent some time studying Jahal's movements and habits. He was, by all accounts, absent-minded, and that was something I could use. I'm well, thanks. I was hoping I'd run into you. I've heard interesting things about the items you're showcasing here. You remember I do freelance scouting for some wealthy collectors? Uh, yes. Well, a client of mine has expressed an interest in relics from Defoe Manor in Buckinghamshire. He's been on my back for a while about it. Between you and me, he seems pretty obsessed. What remained of Professor Chahal's suspicion melted away from his expression at the opportunity to make money, as the opportunity to make money entered the conversation. Well, I'm sure I wouldn't want to damage your professional status. Would you like to come up to my room for drinks? Oh, I don't want to impose. No imposition at all. Please follow me. Your room key, Mr. Railby. Ah, oh, thank you. Please lead the way, Professor. Ebid, who's your friend? Oh, let me introduce you. This is my personal assistant, Sheb... What the hell was that? She accompanies me on most of my excursions. Sieb... Siebon? Sieb? I don't know. He's looking for information on the faux manor artifacts. Oh, really? Him and half the people we meet. What is it about that place? Never underestimate the attraction of a mystery, my dear. Please take a seat, Terry. I'll be right with you. So, interested in ghost stories? The girl struck me as a forceful personality. 
I gave the matter some thought before replying. Not really. I'm just scouting on behalf of a client, like I told the professor. Hmm. You know, it's strange to see someone as young as you in the antique trade. And come to think of it, I thought only old men dressed like that. <laughs> no offense meant. None taken. I didn't catch your last name. It's Damali. Saiba Han... What? Couldn't be more Irish if I tried, could it? Sorry to keep you waiting, dear boy. Now then, what shall we talk about? When talking to characters, you must specify a topic of conversation. For example, try typing talk to uh, Abed about Defoe Manor. Okay. This is going to be a hard conversation to navigate. Also, I have no idea what her name is. So, what the hell was it? What if I don't know their names? How do I actually ask them about something? Okay. What if I don't specify who I want to talk to? What if I just say, like, talk about Defoe Manor? I don't understand the word Defoe. Well, screw you. Do you not have a list? You don't have a list of things you can talk about? What if you just, like, don't remember how the freaking hell to spell something? Alright. Abed? I'm not even sure how to pronounce his name. I don't think I can pronounce any of these people's names. Abed, I guess? Abed? Abed? I don't understand the word def- okay. Manor? So, I understand you came into possession of artifacts from Defoe Manor. Oh, it's D-E-F-O-E. -E. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And it was astonishing to me that such artifacts as existed at all. The whole place burned to the ground. Did you hear about the Defoe Manor incident? <laughs> yes, I did. I was experiencing a sick feeling that I had not felt for quite some time. Unpleasant memories, indeed. The last I... The last I had felt it was while standing at the gates of another country mansion, not long after Defoe Manor, preparing to break in. Oh yeah, can you imagine trying to break into another manor? After that? I'd just be terrified you'd be locked inside, and the same thing would happen again. Recalling those five wretched days churned my stomach with fear, turning what had once been the joy of thievery into an exercise in anxiety. And discussing it brought that feeling back. The act of feigning ignorance, while visions of welding masks and machetes flooded my mind's eye, worsened them. I heard something on the news. And it's been on the news again lately, since that Taylor woman died. A lot of silly talk about the paranormal has been abound, so the true facts are near unreachable. But the point is, some enterprising fellows picked up one or two undamaged items from the ruins. Furniture, books, an ugly little tribal figurine. And I took them off their hands, purely out of curiosity, of course. So, were there any particular items your client is interested in? Talk to Abed about... Um, figurine? Tell me, does a huge man in a welding mask and leather apron mean anything to you? Not really. Should it? Never mind. It's a small African figurine that my client wants me to look at. Resembling a rather ugly tribal god. That old thing? Honestly, despite its age, it's virtually valueless. That's what I said, but my client is very insistent. He is interested in the paranormal, and the idol features in some of the more unlikely accounts of the Defoe Manor incident. Unlikely. <laughs> well, I don't suppose I should ask questions if this man of yours wants to take it off my hands. I don't have it on me right now. It's being kept in the hotel safe. Perhaps we can work out a deal after the fair? I had intended to display it with the other Defoe artifacts. Inwardly, I just wanted to get this mission completed as fast as possible. But I didn't want to risk suspicion, or giving off the wrong impression. That will be fine. So, just out of interest, 
What else have you picked up from the mansion? Odds and ends, basically. Some silverware and ceramics. Most of a burnt rocking chair. And the painting, of course. Painting? A landscape. From a wall in the mansion's lounge. Uh, of little artistic value, but the artist features prominently in Defoe Manor's colorful history. Matthew Defoe? That's him, yes. Bethan, she runs the hotel. She asked if she could display it in the lobby. Oh. Yeah. The landscape. The landscape painting. Wasn't that the one that kept changing every time you came back to the room? Hmm. Instantly, I recalled the sick feeling I'd felt in the lobby. I had seen the painting, but had paid it little heed. Oh. Are you all right, Mr. Railby? You've gone rather pale. What? I'm sorry, I was just... distracted by my thoughts for a moment. Lost in history, huh? Something like that. <laughs> Mr. Railby? What the hell was that? What the hell was what? You were just sitting there, then you went all stiff like you'd seen a ghost. You didn't see it? See what, Mr. Railby? I I'm sorry, I... I have to go. Something's wrong. Oh, well, we won't keep you then. We'll see you later, maybe? My head was spinning, and a sudden nausea churned in my gut. The world seemed to be pulsating, the corners of the room wavering like a heat haze. You may say I imagined these things, and I thought that must have been the case. Was I going out of my mind? Was the hotel really changing into some nightmarish twin? Was I the only one who could see it? If I was hallucinating, it was too complex. The harsh wooden floor beneath my feet felt real enough. The horrendous stench of the rotting flesh that reached my nostrils could not have been conjured up by my imagination. I decided I had to find John Defoe's idol as soon as possible. If not that, then at least the painting Chahal had, had mentioned. I was convinced that some connection lay between Defoe Manor and this sudden madness. Oh boy. Hold on, how do I save? I just realized, how do I save the game? Because there's like no menu. How do you save the... Oh god. I don't know how to save the game, that's going to be a problem. Um, I guess we'll just keep going for now. Okay. His body is here, his soul is not. Oh boy. Okay. Let's look around and let's try to find the painting. I can't fall in that hole, can I? No. Uh, look at hole? I stared blankly. Uh, I'm not sure if you can actually look at that hole. But I'm damn well gonna try. Okay, whatever. Uh, let's look around. Sickly yellow paint was peeling from the walls, and splatters of blood spelled out mystifying phrases. Remarkably, the doors seemed intact. Jesus, there's blood everywhere. I wonder if anybody would answer if I knocked. The situation had reached the point I felt when politeness could be done away with. Okay. Fair enough. Open door. The door was stuck shut. I suppose trying to, uh, use my lockpicks on the door probably wouldn't work. I couldn't insert a pick. The lock appeared to have collapsed. Okay. Chozo. Chozo Mythos. You know, one thing I'm not sure about how to do is how to just, like, look at an object if you don't know its name. I mean, it's easy enough to say, look at window, but like this, I don't even know what it is. Can I just say, like, look? Blood spatters covered every wall and surface in the room, as if someone had lost a fight with some horrible beast here. 
Metal tables and some kind of stone altar all showed evidence of recent slaughter. A mangled old sofa stood in one corner. Stone altar? Stone altar? What stone altar are you talking about? What, what in here is made of stone? Oh, this is stone? I thought it was just a bed. It does look rather hard. Can I say, like, look at... Oh my god, I gotta pull out my keyboard so I can actually see it. Where once there had been a bed, there was now some kind of stone altar. Chains and manacles indicated that it was for sacrificial purposes. Maybe that's how you're supposed to do it. Maybe you're supposed to examine the room and that kind of gives you the names of the stuff you can look at. The sofa was a rotting green color, and some kind of sharp weapon had created a slash right across the fetid cushions. Can I say look at Cho Chozo? I stared blankly. How do I look up? I don't know. I'm very unfamiliar with examining the world the world in such a manner. I, I just wonder if there's a command that allows you to look at something in front of you. You don't have to know its name. Look. Like, look is the same as just a look around. Look in front. No. Like, examine surprisingly doesn't work. That's also just look around. It's not look at the item in front of you. Let's touch the sofa. I wasn't sure how to. Well, you don't know how to use your arms, then. I just had a thought. Is there going to be a chase sequence where I'm going to have to, like, run away and then, like, feverishly type open door? <laughs> that would be very awkward. The door was stuck shut. Okay. Look out window. The panes were cracked and bloodstained, and wooden boards blocked the view, apparently nailed haphazardly on from outside. Okay. Do I want to go up or down? Let's go down. Run. Uh. I wonder if you can save the game by typing save. Oh, <laughs> you do! Oh, I kind of feel clever for having found that out. At the same time, it's kind of ridiculous that you have to do that. Uh, what if you type help? I don't understand the word help. Well, you're no help, then. Commands. I wish there was, like, a list of basic commands you could put in. I looked at the readme, by the way, they don't have one. Other than, you know, the basic tutorial about how to, like, open stuff or talk to people. What does that say? Priest? Does it say priest? Priest or... Prisoner? Hard to read. Acolyte or slave? Stuck shut. Stuck shut. Stuck shut. Chances are all of these are going to be stuck shut, but... Worth a shot. Oh, I go in front. What if I said, like, look down? Does that work? The stairwell was built from old concrete, and a thick smell of damp filled the air. I think that's the same as look around. Yeah. Uh, those look like notes. Can I say pick up? Notes? They appear to be entries from a diary. July 18th. Felicia and I took shelter from the storm in a decrepit old hotel in the forest. 
It seems to be completely deserted. So we bedded down on the floor of the lobby for the night. It's so peaceful here. The noise of the storm seems far away. July 19th. Exploring the hotel, it has become increasingly clear that the place is not as innocent as it first seemed. We found ancient corpses and evidence of terrible deeds in several of the rooms. The storm is cleared and we intend to leave as soon as possible. July 20th. I am certain now that devilry is at work. Every path we take through the forest brings us back to the hotel. We spent a whole day trying routes to no avail. Felicia keeps talking of a demon she fancies she saw in the hotel kitchen last night. July 21st. Felicia is dead. I was too late to help her. I saw her murderer just as she did. Perhaps I will be next. I am beginning to understand. July 23rd. The murderous figure in black, the one whose body is savagely stretched into a mockery of form, is not the architect of this nightmare. Rather, this is the work of that hideous lord of the forbidden lands. Gods forgive me. July 25th. I built a shrine to, to my captor in the lobby in an attempt to appease it. Nothing has changed. I have no more food. The horror is starting to affect my mind. July 28th. I am certain my mind is going. I imagined for a moment that the hotel had changed, had become finely decorated and welcoming as it must have once been in the past. I blinked, and it returned to its normal hateful self. Whoa, they imagined it. Their fantasy was it changing back into what it normally is, was for me. That's strange. Makes you wonder which one is the fantasy. The next few pages were sprinkled with blood, obscuring some of the text. August 1st. What the hell? What is his... Disgusting... Is he a servant or a prisoner? Sometimes he acts alone, sometimes the behest of a higher power. What does he want from me? August 3rd. He is after me now. I think it. I must have done something wrong. August 4th? It hurts. That was the last readable entry. I decided not to take them with me. They were covered in blood and all stuck together. Ugh. Is that a body? The body was that of a young, muscular man. I hazarded and was wearing some... Wait. I hazarded? Oh, I... What? What? I'm not sure if I'm misreading that. Anyway. And was wearing some kind of old-fashioned military uniform, complete with blue tunic and riding boots. More to the point, his head was missing, and his hands were worn down to bloody wads of flesh and bone. Jesus. I noticed a collection of handwritten pages on the floor near his body. The lobby, too, had been tainted, and the painting I sought was absent. Presumably it only existed in the hotel's normal form. If that was the case, I needed to find a way back there, or dispel the hallucination if this truly was all in my mind. At this stage, I was beginning to wonder if this really was all John Defoe's doing. It didn't seem his style, somehow. But what other evil could possibly be the culprit? Well, there's a pentagram. Look around. The entrance room of the... of the... alternative... Clan... Wanbrin. That's a weird name. Clan Wanbrin Hotel at least retained the basic shape of a lobby, in that the pigeonholes remained in an altar about the right size and shape for a reception counter. Look at... wall? A pentagram had been scrawled on the north wall, and a cow's skull had been nailed in place over it. It seemed to be some kind of offering. Oh, that was the offering he was talking about. The one that apparently didn't work. Is that a sheet of... something? Or is that peeling wallpaper? Look at wallpaper. I don't understand the word wallpaper. Well, you're an idiot. Look at scratches. Are those scratches? I don't understand the word scratches. Okay! Trilby, you might want to open up a dictionary once in a while. Actually, who the hell does that? I've never opened up a dictionary and just read ran random words. Look out the window. I stared blankly. 
Right, this body appears to have all, had all of its skin peeled off. Look at body. Someone had been tied down to the altar, flayed, and had their innards removed. By the looks of the horrible claw marks and broken fingernails, they had been alive at least partway into the procedure. Ugh. Open door. Looks like some of the letters have fallen off. Is that a head on a spike? Look around. The hotel's exterior was as corrupted as its interior. The ground beneath my feet was hard, red and gritty like desiccated clay. A head? The two heads on the right were decayed down to their skulls, but the one on the left was very much fresh, its features made unfamiliar by the torment it had undergone. Can I take any of these things, just out of curiosity? I was loath to even go near them. Fair enough. What is this? I mean, it's just more blood. I suppose it doesn't matter that much. Look at... Great. Hmm. At the name of the hotel? Yeah, that doesn't work. More blood. Hooray! Looks like this person was hacked to death right here. This person was trying to escape over the fence and then was hacked to death. And this person was just shot in the chest. And this right here is just where some very clumsy tor tourist just spilled some ketchup. This one's blood, though. Oh. Okay. It goes in a circle. Wonderful. I don't suppose I can go down? Nope. Can I blink? I don't understand the word blank. Okay, never mind. Open the door. Try to open this door. Jesus. You know, this actually kind of reminds me of... Um... Oh crap, what was the game called? Downfall? Downfall, right? Yeah, it's another horror adventure game that I played a little while ago. I'm pretty sure it was called Downfall. By the same person who made uh, The Cat Lady. Because it takes place in a hotel room and everything is wrong with it. Everything is wrong with the hotel room. It's covered in blood and weird stuff. Very much like this. Let's look at... I'm assuming that's a painting. The left poster was some kind of portrait of the strange masked figure I had glimpsed in the hotel. The middle poster was blank. The third was smashed. Let's look around. Perhaps the alternative hotel bar had been the real one at some point in the past, but it had long since fallen into disarray and appears to have been used for a very sinister purpose purposes. Is that an arcade machine? It appeared to be damaged with the front plate, a jar, and frayed wires emerging from the rear. Strangely, though, the screen was active and flashing blankly. Perhaps I can use it. Let's look around first, though. You know, this is forcing me to think of the world in a different way from the previous games and most point-and-click games, because normally I try to pick up everything, but in this case, there's like almost nothing to really pick up. Which is kind of nice, I suppose. I don't think I can pick something up here. I doubt I could have taken that with me. I'm not sure what that is. 
look at bar. In keeping with the alternative hotel's theme, the furniture looked like someone had been hurled against them with absolutely fatal force. Lying on the bar in a pool of gore was a pair of long-nosed pliers. Oh, that is something I could pick up. Pick up pliers. They were rusty but functional. I took them with me. I mean, even these freaking tables look like some beast took a gigantic bite out of them. Damn it. Oh, yeah, same description. Alright, let's try to use this thing. Even word in fully working order, I had far better things I could have been doing. Okay. What if I use my players on it? I should probably be more specific. Screw you, then. I really need to pull out my keyboard more. Just FYI, I normally play with my keyboard. It's like on a separate tray beneath my desk. And normally I play with it pushed in so I can't actually see the keys, so typing is a little bit difficult. I kind of need to see it occasionally. Jesus. Another flayed person. Nailed to the freaking door. Let's look around. It had probably once been a dining room, judging by the number of tables. There were a total of four exits to adjoining rooms. Let's look at this door. What is it barred with? There were four doors, none of which seemed inviting. One to the east led back to the hallway, one to the west leading to the kitchen, one to some kind of unisex bathroom, and another large one that someone had boarded up. Some kind of flayed corpse was nailed into place over the door to the toilet, blocking the way. Yeah, Perhaps it's what the pliers are for? Hold on, though. First, what the hell is this? Look at... What is that? Meat? There was an arrangement of uncooked meat with ribs sticking out of the center table that seemed to be attracting insects beautifully. I try not to think about what kind of meat it was. Yeah, probably human. The kitchen doors refuse to open. Okay, I'm guessing I'm going to need to use the pliers on you. I couldn't get to the door. The corpse was too firmly nailed in place. With the corpse... The nails were hammered in extremely far. My fingertips lacked the strength to pull them out. All right. Use pliers on nails. The pliers were ideal for removing the nails. Oh. What the hell? The body's just gone. It disappeared. And what the hell does this say on the wall? It feels? It feeds? It feeds. There's something here. The gloomy lavatories were in a state of advanced disrepair. One of the cubicle doors was hanging off its hinges, and the mirror above the counter was broken. Okay, what is this? Whatever it is, I want to pick it up. What the hell is it? Was it a note? Uh, use hand to pick up object obviously in front of you. Thing. I don't understand the word thing. Is it an envelope? Oh, it is an envelope. Okay. Baffled, I took the envelope. It was strangely bulky and tore it open. A white pill bottle and a note fell out into my hand. I here enclose the note with this report. Trilby, if you're reading this, then you too have seen the hotel change. At present, I have no idea if the alternative hotel is part of the ethereal realm, or some kind of construct, a pocket dimension. There is a definite correlation between one's level of agitation and one's tendency to reality shift. Fear is your enemy. It leaves you shining like a beacon for whatever whatever evil brought us to this place. 
Enclosed is a bottle of tranquilizers from my personal first aid kit. When you find yourself shifting into the other place, take a pill and try to calm down, and the real hotel will return. Do not let it concern you. I am researching the phenomenon. Your task is to find a foe. Good luck. Agent Lenkman. Well, I didn't think I would be friends with Agent Len Lenkman, but uh, I'm liking him very much at this point. Thank you. Lenkman's letter raised more questions than it answered. I pocketed the pill bottle. Those pills sound rather nice right about now. Let's save. Serious question, is there an alternative way to interact with an object when you don't know its name? Because this is this could easily be a serious problem. I mean, this is pixel art. It's sometimes very hard to tell what a small object is because it's represented by so few pixels. I barely was able to realize I was an envelope. It kind of looked like one, I guess. And I kind of got lucky. I mean, there's got to be a way to interact with an object and pick it up or use it without knowing its name, right? I don't know, it just seems really messy. I mean, I could just see some very frustrating circumstances where you're just pounding your fists against the keyboard as your character stands in front of an object you want to pick up and you just don't know its name to pick it up. Which is the silliest of things. No. None of the toilets appear to be functional. One of them was overflowing with blood, which left me disinclined to investigate the others. Yeah. Let's, um... Get out of here. And I suppose I should use the pills, huh? Lockpicks and pills. Use pills on myself? I should probably be more specific. Okay, use pills. Hesitantly, I tipped a tranquilizer into my palm and swallowed it without water. It quickly took effect. I felt the anxiety lift from the pit of my stomach, and my dismal surroundings seemed to feel less imposing. Then I felt that strange sensation again, of lightheadedness and detachment as the world around me began to quiver. Oh, much, 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 much better. Okay. Let's take a look at that painting. I was frankly astonished that Matthew Defoe's painting had survived the immolation of Defoe Manor. As I stared at it, it seemed that the surrounding room began to blur until only the painting was in focus. I fancied I could hear the creaks and whispers of Defoe Manor's hallways. I felt a bizarre urge to reach out and touch the painting. I wonder if that's how you go to the other world. What if I can just take the painting? As I stepped closer, I could feel sound becoming muffled and my head spinning as if, or, as if I were about to faint. My hand, as if pulled by an invisible string, reached out towards the clumsy brush strokes. Whoa. Defoe Manor, July 28th, AD 1821. Matthew Defoe is 15 years old today. He is excitedly putting the finishing touches to a painting which his father commented on encouragingly, the first time he has ever been supportive of Matthew's artistic leanings. Matthew is now convinced that his father is lifting from the mysterious depression that has plagued him for as long as either of them can remember. Now, he intends to make the painting absolutely perfect before showing it again. Someone's knocking at the door. Master Matthew? Sir Roderick has requested your presence in the trophy room. Thank you, James. And if you would be so good to inform him that I will now be retiring for the night? Very good, James. Ah, there you are, boy. Let me introduce my son, Matthew. Hello. This is my friend, Mr. Smith. He's an expert on African tribal art. Well, just a scholar. Hardly even that, just someone with an interest in the subject. 
and he has offered to assess the figurine I brought back from my travels. I wasn't aware you had a family, Sir Roderick. Is your wife home, too? Regrettably, Belinda is no longer with us. Oh, I'm sorry. Quite all right. You couldn't have known. She succumbed to illness shortly after Matthew was born. Yes. <laughs> I finished the painting I showed you, Father. Oh, good. Well, Mr. Smith, what do you think of the piece? It's an intriguing little puzzler, actually. The design is reminiscent of a few Central African tribal gods I'm aware of. But to be honest, I've never seen anything like this before. May I ask how you acquired it? I'm glad you asked. It was twenty years ago, when I was a younger man, on my first travels in the Dark Continent. We were traveling along the west coast, when our bearers spotted a ship that had run aground. It was an English clipper, named the Sea Angel, and a short exploration revealed that every single crewman had just disappeared. Of course, we immediately sent a letter to the nearest embassy to report the finding. But the point is, it was on the lowest deck of the ship that I found this very figurine you see before you today. What an extraordinary tale. But how do you account for there being an African tribal carving on a British vessel? We were as confused as you are. It wasn't a slave trading vessel, but there must have been a negro on the crew. It has been a personal mystery of mine ever since. I was hoping you could help shed a little light on the matter. But there's more to tell. I haven't even begun to recount the strange events that have surrounded this artifact. Would you care for a glass of brandy? Thank you. That would be most kind. Matthew, fetch the brandy from the kitchen, and some glasses. Yes, Father. Oh, God, is that the apron? I think that's the apron. Examine. Defoe Manor's kitchen was small, and somewhat sparsely furnished in contrast to the wealth of the house as a whole. Besides the sideboard, the only furniture was a large wooden table and a narrow drinks cabinet in the corner. Look at the apron. It was a tough, well-used brown leather apron. Matthew wondered which member of the staff had been using it. Ah, the apron. And that looks like a rather large knife. Anyway, let's uh, get the brandy in the glasses. Let's take the glasses. Matthew took the brandy bottle and a pair of appropriate glasses. Oh, God. Hello. You haven't tried to speak to me in a while. I did another painting today. I showed it to Father, and he said it was promising. I keep trying to tell him about you, but he never listens. You haven't knocked for me in so long, I was beginning to wonder. Hey, do you want to see my painting? I'm just not sure how I'd get through the door. Okay, well, let's try to open the door. Obviously, it's not going to work, but... The door was locked, as always, but there was a substantial gap of about an inch at the bottom of the door. Hmm. How could I, Trilby, possibly have known what Matthew was carrying that day? Okay, that's what I get for trying to use my inventory. Knife? Matthew could fathom no purpose for the blades. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. Mrs. Beaton didn't like it when people went into her pantry. Ah, oh, it's a pantry. I suppose I can move the apron. That might have made sense in another time and place, but not then. Matthew saw no purpose for it and didn't want to interfere with other people's possessions. Okay. Hmm. Is 
Do I have to do that before I go back here? Let's try to go back here. Matthew wanted to show his painting to his friend first. Okay. Do Isn't the painting upstairs, though? It's not like I'm going to slide the painting under the door, so I need to get him out. I need to get him out, but I don't... I can't look at my inventory and I can't leave the room? Huh? Then what? I don't understand. Alright, look at the crap. <laughs> look at the crap. Look at the uh, crack. Look at gap. The door is locked as always, but there is a substantial gap of about an inch at the bottom of the door. Okay, how's that gonna help me? I mean, I could pass him a key or something. I mean, if I had a key, I could just use it. And I can't look at my inventory. Talk to door. Do you still want to see my painting? I'm gonna take the banging as a yes. Alright, there's an apron I can't pick up. There's blades I can't pick up. Where would the... Do I need to find the key? I mean, there's a gap under the door. If I could find the key, then I wouldn't need the gap, right? So what's the gap for? I don't think there's anything around here. Small? Mm-hmm. Maybe just look in the sideboards. Open... Sideboards? I don't get it. What in the seven hells am I supposed to do here? Alright, well this is actually a pretty good place to end the episode. So, so far, it's quite different from the previous games. I mean, it looks like the graphic style is the same, the sound design seems pretty much the same, but just in terms of how you control it, it's very different. Completely different. At the moment, I can't say whether it's... I like how you control and interact with the world more or less than the previous ones, but it's certainly different. And it's certainly unique, to me anyway. I mean, there's been many games made in this way, but this is the first one I've actually ever played. It's interesting. It's strange. I certainly find it extremely unintuitive. But it's interesting, that's for sure. Alright, so I'll save the opening of this door to let my friend out to play. Yeah, and see my painting. That'll be fun. I'll let him out in the next episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far. And I will be back soon.